Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Data Color Studio um, Color Calibration Webinar. Spider 5 Studio, the newest product, and me, it's Boris Bergman, together tonight with Richard West. Hi, Rich, thank you uh, for Hi, being boss. here with us tonight. Oh, and, good to be here. Uh, okay, thanks. And uh, for the next about 60 minutes, Rich will show us what about the new product? What about the new product bundle from Data Color? And after the pr presentation, we will go into a chat where you have the possibility to enter all the questions you have. So, Rich, now it's your time. Please go. Cool. Thanks, Boris. Well, good evening, folks, and uh, welcome to this this webinar. Now, as Boris says, we're going to be uh, talking about color calibration, uh, looking specifically at the the, the Spider Spider Five Studio as a solution to, to handle color calibration all the way through the, uh, the system, you know, all the way through your, your, your workflow, basically. But rather than getting particularly product-oriented, I mean, there is the product. You can see there in the Spider 5 Studio comes in a lovely case. We'll, we'll cover off the elements, but what we'll, we'll talk about in this session is why there are the three different parts of this solution. So, without further ado, let's let's think about what it is that we all want to achieve. We want to achieve the ability to take photographs and basically see the colours that are there out in in real life, and okay, know that when you see those colours, those are the colours that you're going to end up with in whatever your finished output is. Now, that finished output could be print, but then again, it could be the internet. It could be on a TV screen, in a DVD, it could be, um, you know, on, on an inner nowadays. But the same color workflow applies all the way through. However, when you get the joys of print into a, a scenario, you do add in a particularly large variable. But we're going to have a look at that in a little bit, as far as the back end is concerned. First of all, what we're going to look at is the front end, because there's, there's three elements really which we need to consider. First of all, is capturing your images. We need to make sure that we capture those colors and the images correctly. Secondly, and this is stage three, if you like, in this workflow diagram, is retouching those images. And there's some elements that we're going to specifically talk about in there that you need to be addressing. And then lastly, we're going to look at output and how we can calibrate for output, basically. How we can, if we are in particular going out to print, how we can uh, basically get ahead of the game and know how things are going to be, uh, be coming out and therefore address any imperfections that creep in at that point. But first of all, let's have a think about this front end. I want to take a shot. I want to be able to make sure that I don't have any elements in there that I don't want, i.e. color casts from lighting conditions or maybe imperfections due to lenses, perhaps a, a color cast due to that, reflections and so on that are, are skewing my images. And so. There's a whole range of different solutions out there for addressing that. But fortunately, one of the, the sort of most portable and best ways of dealing with this is actually something well, called the spider cube, which we're going to be talking about in particular. But essentially, gray cards are what we're going to talk about first and foremost. But there's, there's a difference here between um, gray cards that are conventional uh, things that we've been using for years and the spider cube which we're going to be talking about specifically and we'll get into that in more detail. Let's have a look at what the issues are. Essentially when I take a photograph or when you take photographs you can take them in a lighting condition but unless you have either a particularly good memory, really accurate uh, ability to view colors with your eyes, you're not actually liable to remember what those colors are when you get back and start preparing those images for going out to output. I mean, in this example here, I mean, we've got a picture of uh, some green leaves on a beige background. Or have we? Because, of course, they could actually have been lighter green leaves on a white background or maybe dark green leaves on a darker background. Because what I haven't got is a frame of reference. And that's absolutely what we need to add into the start of our workflow. So our color calibration, we're going to consider the back end and how to get things correct at the back end, i.e. going out to print and other types of media. We're going to consider how to make sure we're doing that accurately in the middle of our middle part, the retouching part of our workflow. But capturing things in the first place is one of the key important areas. And it's so easy to do. Now you could just use a piece of paper, for instance, 
or a grey card, you know, one of these fold out grey cards that you can get. But the trouble with using just a piece of paper is, well, do you really know the value of white of that piece of paper? You know, there's lots of different types of stock. We'll come to that later on. But that affects the way you see that white. So there's no point using white balance tools in Lightroom, Photoshop, etc., etc., to set that, that white level if you're not setting it accurately to a known value of white. So grey cards were originally brought out as being the solution to this. But the trouble with the grey cards, either that they are cards and therefore they can easily get scratched or creased or mucked up, or if you go for the fold-out sort, they in, in absolutely get creased just in the sheer nature of folding them up, so that immediately affects those, those white values again. But also they can blow away as well, you know, so, so these things aren't exactly the, the best um, animal for, for what we want to do. So hence we've got something called the spider cube. Now, this comes as part of the, the Spider 5 Studio, so that's a good thing. So we're talking about something that's included in the box tonight. But basically, more importantly, you know, even if you decide, well, a studio, you don't need all the elements, but this is a really cool tool for getting your, your white balance, your colors, your contrasts, all your capture information correct. Because, well, let's, let's take it out of slides. Let's have a look at this in, in uh, for instance, in the Lightroom. I've got it uh, in Lightroom here. I've already shot. Uh, this this particular cube. Now it, it is cubic. It may look sort of like a uh, almost a hexagon here, but it isn't. It's, it's a cubic device, and it's actually uh, I'm I'm hanging it in a tree here. But uh, but basically you can tripod mount it. That little sort of uh, cylinder down the bottom of the the, the cube is in fact a, a tripod mount or a lighting mount mount, and it has a major advantage in that. It's about size wise. It's about a um, a four centimeters or an inch and a bit per side. So so that that's you know very pocketable. So easy to, to slip into a jacket, pocket into a bag. You can have this on your person and you should really at all times. And it hasn't got that cumbersome nature of cards for instance. It's just a, a nice easy thing. You could almost connect it to a keychain but uh, we would advise perhaps to take a little bit more care with it than that. And what we've got here is a solid cube, a solid plastic cube, which has got, as you can see, two sides of the same. So let's have a look. This side and this side are exactly the same levels of grey and white. This is a 96% white. This is a 96% white. This is an 18% grey. This is an 18% grey. But evidently, as we've captured it here, it isn't looking like that. Now, there's a reason for that, and that reason is we've got light coming in from the left-hand side of the picture here, which is making this side lighter or putting this side into shadow. And we also, because this is the same shot we were looking at in the slide deck just now, same, uh, same environments I should say, we also potentially have got a, um, a color cast. So what we're going to do in Lightroom, and we could do this in other softwares as well, but let's just uh, let's make this as big as possible so we can have a, a good look at this. What we're going to do is when we go into uh, Lightroom, use the Tools and Develop mode, uh, Develop module, to actually First of all, take out any overall color cast. Now we're going to do that using our white balance tool. Secondly, we're going to set the exposure because we know, as mentioned, this is a 96% white. We also know this is a 4% black around this this black hole here. This is in fact a hole. It's a, a therefore a relevant black point to 0% uh, black, if you like, to, um, to, to any lighting condition. It will always be the black hole, basically. And in fact, we've also got 100% white on this ball here. In fact, if I turn on my scintillation points, you can see where we've got outer gamut areas. So we've got a, an outer gamut area on that ball, which is fine. That's what we wanted. But we've also got uh, potentially you know, some outer gamut areas in other areas. We know what should be an outer gamut blue down here in this hole isn't at the moment because it isn't showing 100% white. So how do we address this? Well, as I say, first and foremost, let's actually take out any overall color cast. And we're going to use this lighter side. Now, this is very important because with the, the joys of our, um, our gray cards, the predecessors or that piece of paper, in order to get just that, that sort of gray level correct, to give it a vague correct level, if you know what the level is in the first place, the suggested wisdom is that you have to shoot that card at 45 degrees to the light. Because as can be seen here, the same sides, or the same values, changed around slightly, will give different readings. So actually give an incorrect reading if you don't set this correctly. Now the joys of the cube, because it is cubic and there's a, an axis down here, 
one side is always going to be 45 degrees to the light, as long as you have this little hole pointing towards you. So therefore, well, yeah, roughly 45 degrees. So therefore, we're going to use this lighter side here to set our grey bones, or so our white bones. So taking out, you can see instantly, right, there definitely was a colour cast to this, basically. Now then what we're going to do is we're going to set our exposure levels. And the, the purpose of this is obviously not just to have a really accurate reading of this picture of a spider cube. It's actually to save in our presets these little effects down the left-hand side in our develop module, the correct levels of color cast removal, exposure, and shadow detail, such that we can apply that to every other image taken in this the same lighting conditions. So let's let's do exactly that, and that, that way we can instantly, in choice of Lightroom, we can batch process all of our images that are taken in this lighting condition and correct them with one click of a button. So that's what we're going to do here. First of all, we've already taken out our color casts, so you've seen that. Secondly, what we're going to do is we're going to drop down our exposure. Now we're going to do that, if you look at the histogram on the top right hand corner here, underneath it, when I scroll over the actual picture, you'll see some numbers popping up there. That says 99.4, 99.4, 99.5 .4, there. Now what we know is that this value of white on the actual guide itself, so our reference point white here, is in fact 96% white. So in order to get that to the right level, I'm going to adjust my exposure slightly down until I get to a level that says 96. It's still a bit high. Okay, so somewhere around here, just a bit below that midpoint. And we're just about 96 there, so it's on average somewhere around 96%, which is great. So we've now got our exposure correct. So we'd obviously been overexposing, but not necessarily by the usual sort of one or two stops there that you'd expect with RAW. And now what we're going to do is we're going to check around this, this circle here. So this should be a 4%. Now, as you can see, it's reading somewhere around 10% at the moment. So if I drop down our black slider now, what essentially we're doing now is we're actually getting the, the contrast looks right because we're, we're getting our shadow detail to the right level. And of course, it's important to do this because basically what we're, we're doing here is we're setting the contrast, but also the black levels of our images. So in particular, again, if you're going out to a printer and it's a color calibrated printer that you're using, then getting the black levels correct in the first place is going to save you a lot of wasted ink, for instance. You need to be able to make sure you're not over getting everything overly dark, basically. But having done that, we've now got the correct values of, of shadow and light here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop into our develop settings up in the menu bar here and create a new preset. We're going to call that cube plants and give it a date, why not, 30th of the 9th. And that's going to give us a preset, in fact, when I hit the Create button here, you can see it popping in there, so I can now go into other shots, basically, that I've taken the same lighting conditions, and just hit the Cube Plants preset, and it's going to correct those same uh, imperfections in those shots. And of course, if I had a whole bunch of shots, I could correct all of them by choosing all of them, selecting all of them, and clicking the button to correct all of them in an, in an instant, basically. So so there we are, that's, that's how we're getting into our corrected lighting here, and very important basically using this because of course it's, it's starting off the whole of our process. Now we're using the, the cube here, as I say, in deference to uh, just a general grey card because it has all those benefits of being very pocketable. It is scratch resistant though as well, so it's not like a, 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 you know, a, a card which can just get folded and creased straight away and almost out as soon as it comes out the box. It's made out of a, 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 a plastic resin, basically, so it's scratch resistant as well. And even if you did manage to scrape through into any of these these areas here, it's actually resin impregnated all the way through. So highly resistant, uh, highly, highly durable device. As I say, tripod mountable as well. So if you've not got somewhere to hang it, you can either sit it on that little mount down the bottom here, or you can tripod mount it onto a tripod or onto a, uh, a lighting mount just to give you some uh, very portable solution that you can just pop out there you know, stick it into your scenes, take a shot of it, and then you've got that frame of reference there. And of course, you don't need somebody else to hold it, and you don't have to worry about it blowing away as well. So well, we we started to look at the the front end of our workflow. Now there are other solutions out there to um, to correct these, and uh, things like the the data color spider checker as well. There's the the color card here, or the the mini version, or sort of the 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 single panel version, I should say, which is the spider checker 24. All solutions that can be used for that sort of front end calibration, but we haven't got a chance to talk about those tonight because what we do need to do is get through the whole of this workflow. We, so we, we've we've sort of solved how we can get this correct at the stages one and two by capturing things in camera correctly. Now let's consider the other big element that can be a 
cause of changes. I already mentioned it. So if you're just using a piece of paper and throwing that in there as your white point, how do you know what that white point is? Because of course, card, paper, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have lots of different shades of white. But that's the same issue that brings in elements at the back end of your workflow, i.e., the fact that okay, I've got my um, different uh, printer, perhaps that uh, I've got a couple of different printers, and I've got lots of different stock there with different inks as well. And I'm going to take my images and I'm going to print them out on these different stocks. How do I get it correct? How do I know how things are going to come out? Because I know, for instance, if I think about taking an image and putting it into a glossy magazine versus putting it into a newspaper, I think we all know that those different types of stock there, the newspaper stock, very, very sort of uh, porous and it's not going to soak up ink and make it spread and therefore make your images darker and more um, filled in compared to the glossy magazine where it's going to be a lot more true to what you see on screen, potentially. You know, the two different stocks there are just causing different end results. So if I'm going to get my images looking great when I go out to print, how do I get that correct? Well, of course, what I need to do is add in some extra stages into our workflow. Now, it has to be said, this is the same thing even if you're getting your images printed externally by a different printer, by a print company, for instance, same thing applies here. What we need to do is add in a couple of stages. Now, what I've done is, going from our original diagram where we had just one screen down the bottom here, what I'm saying here is we're not just using three screens, we're using the same screen, but we're seeing it over a period of time, i.e., what we're going to do here is some extra stages in our retouching. First of all, if, say, for instance, at our print end, at our output end, there is an effect, let's say we're putting it onto a parchment stock or a, a luster stock, or there's some sort of stock there, a canvas stock, for instance, that is causing the image that we've been printing out to look different. And, of course, that might be down to the printer or the ink as well. What we need to do is add in this all-important stage here, the soft proofing stage, because we need to be able to emulate what's happening at output. Now, the same thing does apply if you're going out to, for instance, the internet or DVDs, etc., etc. It's probably not going to be as pronounced. Print is where you're really going to see this big difference. And, of course, this can be the thing that everybody, whether they're sending off prints or whether they're printing out themselves, can get a major problem. It's probably the most frequent problem they're going to get told it doesn't look right when it comes out. Sometimes it's, you know, frequently it's too dark, for instance. And that's down to the fact that there's not been an allowance for the white point again in your, in your workflow. But you've just not got this soft proofing element in there. Because if you can soft proof, if you can view your images, then you can soft proof them. You can then adjust them. And if you can adjust them, you can adjust it back such that your output result at the end of your workflow looks as near as possible to how you originally shot it. Now it may be due to the type of printer or the type of stock or the type of output environment that it's never going to look exactly the same because that output, maybe it's a projector for instance, just doesn't have the ability to produce rich enough blacks or you know, light enough whites or deep enough colours, who knows. But the key thing here is if you can soft proof it, you're going to see what's going to happen at that back end. So let's just quickly have a look at uh, a Lightroom again. So let's go into Lightroom, let's go into um, the, the library module and choose, uh, let's choose a different shot here. So let's go for, um, ooh, where was I recently? Oxford. So let's nip into Oxford and have a look at um, some shots I was doing, and we'll have a look at the uh, the joys of the uh, one of the colleges there. So I've, I've retouched this shot, and obviously I want to make sure it comes out how I want it to come out. And therefore, I'm going to go into the develop module in Lightroom because this is the easiest tool I've found for soft proofing any images. And it doesn't matter whether it's a, a retouched image like this or something a bit less uh, sort of um, uh, artsy. You know, maybe you've just got some some general sort of shots, you know, maybe black and white shots, in fact, let's turn off our, our out of gamut warnings there, or something that uh, you've done a little bit of work on. But basically, if we want to see how that image is going to come out, then I'm going to say, all right, let's go into soft proofing. And soft proofing is just a one button click here. As I click it, if you look to the right hand side, just under the histogram, you'll see that basically there we've got our type of soft proofing environment coming in, and this is where we can see lots of different types of profiles, and this is the key thing we want to be able to get to. We want to be able to have a profile that describes how things are going to be printed. I mentioned newsprint. 
that, for instance, is a soft proof, an emulation, if you like, of how things are going to look in newsprint. So if I hit the Y key, you're going to see the image on the, the left-hand side, how I wanted it to look, versus the image on the right-hand side, how it's looking at the moment, basically, soft proofed on this particular device. On this, in this case, newsprint. So if I have a look at, for instance, my Epson printer here with luster stock, you can see there's a, a subtle difference here, but you know, not too too far off. If I have a look at it, perhaps at one of my other, you know, I've got a photocopier here at home that I've also profiled up. Then basically, you can see how that's looking a lot more washed out there. What we need to do in any of these situations is to be able to get in there and soft proof these these um, outputs and then basically go in and I'm not going to do this in total detail now but you'll get the gist essentially I need to just adjust what's happening on the right hand side to bring up our image to get it as near as possible to how we wanted it to look when we were retouching so okay at this point we're going to say we're going to create a proof copy because one of the other benefits of Lightroom it automatically gives you the opportunity to produce a proof copy so you've got your original copy then you can soft proof on different types of environment and each time create a different proof copy because what we do here once we've actually adjusted this to to give it the end result that we want let's say that's that's how we want it to look we could do more work but we're not going to again what we're going to do then is go into our presets create a new preset and save that for this particular stock I'm going to call that again 30.9 and hit create and that gives us again another preset which again if we're going to use multiple different images here we're going to go out to multiple different images and um, uh, take to multiple image, images and apply them you know just choose multiple shots there and you can apply this same soft proof whichever one it was I can't actually see which one it was uh, I think perhaps that one there uh, and that's going to adjust things maybe it wasn't but uh, but at the end of the day that's what we, we're going to be uh, wanting to do and of course key thing with this is we need to create these profiles. Now profiles are created using something which, well, you know, we've got we've got to this stage here, we've been able to get to this soft proofing, we've been able to remove that and adjust it. How do we get that profile? Well we use something called a spider print. A spider print is a device that actually you use to calibrate your printers and stocks and inks. So any combination you've got, this gives you the opportunity to give a very accurate uh, print um, calibration. Basically, it gives you the, the profile, automatically produces it, and automatically drops it into your profiles folders once you've used the device. Now, the way it works is the software that it comes with, both Mac and PC, basically works with um, with a, a uh, the device here, you can see on the right hand side, just from the the the, the text there, and that's the the Spider Print device itself. It's actually a USB device. So you load the software, plug in the USB cable, and then you see it's got a, a, a guide basically here that's sitting on top of some some very colourful, what looks like uh, perhaps paint charts. Well, in fact, that's a test chart that we've printed out using the software. In fact, let's just quickly pop out and show you the software. This is the software here. This is the Spider Print software, and what it does is it gives us the opportunity to choose a different selection of targets, for instance, and then those targets will have multiple pages. And all we're doing is we're printing these different targets out on each of our stocks that we're using on each of our printers that we're using and then we're reading them using the the spider print device you saw there and that is building up it reads a line at a time basically and it builds up these profiles so we're actually going down and it's got a little guide here then this guide um, very useful basically because this means it actually guides you. you can press the button once at the start of each line and just slide across you don't have to click on each tile basically so very easy to use and just move down by one line at a time you know, it's going to take maybe 10 or 15 minutes to do a, a profile but well worthwhile and also well worthwhile using the, the more complex uh, profiles because it gives you that opportunity to build up that that uh, that understanding of what your print profiles are and therefore you can use that to soft proof so let's let's quickly um, you know, show you a bit more about it as I say effectively this this is giving you an opportunity to uh, create uh, ICC profiles. Now, ICC profiles is the International Color Consortium standard. So that effectively is the standard that all printer manufacturers, or um, in the graphics trade anyway, all display manufacturers, operating system manufacturers, so Microsoft, uh, Apple, software manufacturers like Adobe, all of them got together and essentially said, right, okay, this is how we want our colors to appear. And it, they described this color space. And they said that's how these colors should show. And therefore, that gives us something we can use to actually say, okay, 
we can use that as a guide to say how our, how our printers should be looking as well. So we can build up this little profile, this little fingerprint of how the, uh, the, the printers um, display their color. And therefore, that gives us an opportunity, basically, to just go in and, uh, and, and essentially soft proof and then adjust accordingly. And then you're going to get your images correct every time. So hopefully that makes sense. What I will do is quickly just pop out and show you what a profile looks like, because you may not be aware. The, the profiles are very small files, probably uh, one to two megs at most. Um, this, for instance, is a generic CMYK profile. So that's essentially the, the, cross, the light crosshairs there are, are the, the highlight end, the dark crosshairs are the shadow end. And what we're looking at is the colors that could be described in that space. Now, on its own, not telling you a whole lot, but if I have a look at Adobe RGB, Hold that for comparison and overlay CMYK on there. You can see CMYK has a lot smaller color space. But, and this is this is something that the, the softwares like Lightroom and Photoshop and so on actually do a very good job of mapping all that out gamut color into. But what we need to do is consider, okay, when I'm going out to a, a different output, what do they look like? What's the end product going to be? So there's, for instance, my, my Epson printer that I was showing you just now, those with the luster stock, the, the Epson printer with the luster stock. In fact, you can see that's not too much smaller than the Adobe RGB color spaces. So actually a very good printer. But I showed you that uh, that Kodak printer of mine as well. So there's that Kodak printer. You can start seeing there how some profiles are a heck of a lot smaller because basically the printer here can't do virtually any black. It's got no black definition. If you're starting to understand, I hope, how different profiles affect things and how much they can affect things as well. But that's giving us our print end of things taken care of. And you know, if you are in a situation where you are printing, where you are uh, selling those prints, or perhaps entering contests and so on, you need to get them right. Then having that, that ability to calibrate that back end using a spider print is absolutely superb. And effectively, it's just it's the it's the necessary part you need basically to get your your prints correct. But of course, there is a big thing that happens elsewhere in our workflow. We talked about the front end. We've talked about the back end print. So the front end, obviously, lighting conditions can affect what you're doing. Back end, the print conditions, the paper, the ink, the printer can affect what you're seeing at the back end of your workflow. But more to the point, in the middle, the retouching part. That is the part that is your window into how things are going to appear. If you're going to soft proof your images to get them correct, to adjust them, to make them look correct when they come out, you need to know that you're looking at a screen that is showing things correctly. And that's where this ICC color space, ICC profiling comes in again, because of course that standard has been set up there such that all screens can be matched to this standard. Because unfortunately, all screens as they come out of the manufacturing plant, even if they're the same model, don't look the same. But if they're different types of devices, there's a whole bunch of different variables in there. And even if it's the same device on the same production line, actually aging can happen differently in displays as well. My previous laptop, it lost 6% of its color gamut in six months because it was a, diff it was a faulty screen. And so therefore, if I can't trust what I'm seeing, how can I adjust things correctly, either at the front end or the back end of our workflow, in particular that back end, if I'm going to get all the trouble of trying to adjust things and make sure things look correct, I need to be looking at a corrected screen. Because otherwise, as per this example here, again, we're not saying three screens here, what we're saying is one screen over a period of time. But if I get my images in at stage one and two, I then look at them, perhaps on my my desktop screen or perhaps on my Wacom Cintiq screen, and if they're not correct, if those screens aren't calibrated, I don't know what to trust for starters anyway, but let's say I trusted this, this green tinted screen here. If I try and remove that green tint, because I know that's what I want to get back to, and I'm also trying to soft proof this back end as well, if I get to the stage where I'm thinking, okay, I've adjusted it and that's what I saw at the start, that's what I saw when I shot the image, that's what I want to get out, unfortunately, you've just wasted your time because even if you've retouched and you've got to that stage and adjusted, you've actually removed here as part of that adjustment stage the green tint that was nothing to do with the soft proofing stage. It was to do with the, the tint on the screen. 
So you need to have a screen that's calibrated so you can trust what you're seeing, so you can get everything correct all the way through. And not just a screen, all of your screens need to be calibrated, basically. But the good thing is, there's a lot of ways in which to do this. Three, in fact, and that's the Spider 5, the Express, the Pro, or the Elite. Now, the good thing is that the Elite is the top of the range one, but that is what comes as part of the, the Spider 5 Studio, and pretty much at the cost of the Spider Pro, which is the, the, the sort of mid-range version for, for photographers, but not necessarily having all the bells and whistles that you, you may want in there. So let's tell you about it. It's the device that basically it comes in a, um, a much more robust, if you've seen um, these calibration devices in the past, much more robust, robust format now. It comes with a lens cap built into the device. In fact, the whole of the device has been really re-geared to make sure it's much more portable, that you can chuck it in and out of your bag, because a lot of us now are working on laptops, on the move, perhaps doing weddings or events, etc., etc. And of course, we want to be able to show our photos and not give the wrong impression of those photos when you're at your customer, at your venue, at your intended show place. So therefore, having something you can pop in and out of a bag is great. And that's exactly what we've done with the, or the guys and girls at Data Color have done with the Spider 5, basically. They've, they've, they've really made um, leaps and bounds here compared to anything that's, that's come before. Because previously, calibration devices like this for screens have all pretty much been aimed at sitting in a studio. And that's where they've, they've really sort of come on with the, this new design because they've encapsulated the optics for starters. So they, they've not only got that lens cap in there to protect the optics, they've also encapsulated those optics. So essentially they're cushioned and they're cosseted in there. So it's, again, a lot more bump resistant. And they've, they've also increased, there's a, there's a honeycomb view. This is actually the sensor array we're looking at on this left-hand side here where I'm moving my cursor at the moment. There's a honeycomb that they've put across there. It's actually introduced in the Spider 4. But it's been improved and, and taken further because the Spider 4 addressed with the, the Pro and the Elite a, a big down failing of some displays, and in particular perhaps things like IMAX, where they've got quite a large glass, shiny front to the, the display. And the trouble is when you're trying to calibrate that display, unless you're in completely controlled lighting conditions, there's a whole bunch of light that can come in from the sides and scatter across the screen and really muck up your readings. So that's ostensibly where this, this baffle, this, this honeycomb baffle, was originally put in on the, the, the Spider 4 Pro and Elite to, to cut down extraneous light and to really focus the light. And what it is, is essentially is a, is a selection of rods, but what we've done with the, the Spider 5 now is it's just been made that much more accurate and finer and, and deeper as well, just to really focus light onto the sensor, basically. You can see in this cutaway here, it's focusing light onto the, the sensor. And that, in fact, is giving up to 55% improvement in the color accuracy of, in particular, some of those monitors like the IMAX out there, or less quality monitors, basically. So, you know, really great redesign here. It's very portable. They've also added in uh, things like um, uh, the joys of uh, a... Um, uh, tripod mount, so you can actually uh, tripod mount the spider and use it to to calibrate larger screens or, or projectors as well. And uh, and there's a whole bunch of improvements they've added into the software. So let's let's have a quick look at the software as well. So this is uh, this is the software here. This is the end of the process, Mac or PC again, basically. Um, basically, previously you'd get to this stage, perhaps in in some of the softwares, and be able to compare some of these charts. But now we've given you a, a full screen mode where you can go into a particular quadrant, go into full screen, and hopefully this will come across for you folks at home. You may not see it correctly if you're not calibrated at home or in your studios, wherever you're watching from. But if I hit the space bar now, I can calibrate between. That's the calibrated view. And that's the uncalibrated view. So hopefully you'll be seeing a change between the two views wherever you're viewing this, this session tonight. And uh, basically that's giving you that, that change, you know, where I showed you on the slides that sort of green tint versus how you wanted it to look. It's that sort of effect here that we're seeing. This is on obviously from my laptop. You can see how different it is between uh, the uncalibrated and calibrated view on my laptop. And that's the thing we need to make sure we're looking at the calibrated view to avoid, because if I'm looking at this, for instance, if I come out of here and I have a look at more um, you know, portraiture, and I go in here in this full screen mode, and I have a look at the calibrated 
versus the uncalibrated. So that's how that's the uncalibrated view here. When I hit the calibrated view, it's a lot warmer as far as I'm seeing it anyway. And of course, that difference is something where if you'd been looking at it in an uncalibrated fashion, you could have tried to warm up your image to increase the, the warmth, the ambience of your shot and actually ruined your shot because of course it would have been coming out fine in that calibrated view. But you've gone in and essentially made the young lady look very orangey red and perhaps uh, softened it. Who knows what, you, what you've done in order to correct for things that just aren't there. It's just an imperfection of your screen. So that's absolutely what we need to be addressing and that's precisely what the spider is there for. Now as I say, the, the software itself, I couldn't show you the first parts because uh, essentially um, uh, you know, it's, it's quite—it's it's not the most exciting of processes to watch. It's a bunch of colours, basically. In fact, I can show you sort of the, the, the gist of that. You're just plugging in the spider, a USB device, into your computers that are driving the screen that you want to calibrate. Now, that screen could be, for instance, a TV or a, a, um, a projector, as mentioned, or um, uh, and anything you know in the form of laptops or Cintiqs. As long as you're driving it from a from a computer, Mac or PC, then you can run this software on there. First calibration takes about five minutes, but with the Elite, which comes as part of the uh, uh, the Spider 5 Studio bundle, it, the recals take about two or three minutes, basically. So quicker again when we we're just getting perhaps to a new venue, quickly recalibrate, a couple of minutes, great, you've got yeah, recalibration done, job done. And the software now also guides you through these stages as well. So if you need any tips on room lighting, because one of the things that the Spider 5 Elite has is this this white element here, this sort of what, what appears to be a button, is actually the ambient room sensor. And that's testing the lighting conditions you're in, and it's adjusting for those lighting conditions. So it's giving you that even quicker, even better ability to calibrate for new environments by giving you that little bit of help. And it even has this help interactive help menu popped in there now to, to give you uh, uh, guidance on the on the fly. So you don't have to worry about, you know, all right, what's what do I do with a, a full cal for instance, you know, what what should I be doing there? It's giving you that 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 uh, that tip and trick of how to work with things. So that's where um, effectively We've gone through the software, as I say. We, there's one last element I'll show you in the software there, which actually is, um, let's have a quick look at uh, the, the end of the process here in, uh, once we've, we've done our calibration in uh, the Spider Elite software. In fact, one of the other things we ought to talk about, you can, if you're doing any specific photography yourself, choose your own custom images as well. So as opposed to using the standard guides that come with the uh, the software, you can actually go in and choose your own images, basically, and go, therefore choose uh, anything that you want to be using and perhaps use that as your your potential image to be working on to, to test the before and afters, as it were, in that full screen mode, the calibrated versus the uncalibrated mode. So if you do a lot of landscapes, if you do a lot of perhaps wildlife as well, and that might be something that's relevant to you. But um, lastly, we're giving you the opportunity here, and this is a key point about the, the spider software, is to compare your laptops over time. So for instance, if I go in here and I have a look at my laptop as I calibrated it today, because obviously I calibrate on a very regular basis, we'd recommend weekly if you're doing this professionally, or well, in fact, every time you change location, of course, would be a most relevant thing if you are changing locations a lot. Then we can actually compare though that same display over a period of time. So we can see here, it's the, the, the green triangle is uh, in fact sRGB, the standard RGB uh, color space, and I'm getting about 97% on my display at the moment. So I can compare that over time. Let's have a look at my display, I don't know, uh, a couple of weeks ago. So let's have a look at it there. Now, fortunately, 98% so is about 1% out. That's probably down to more down to lighting conditions. I'm not going to panic particularly on my uh, display just yet, but as I say, last year, over a period of six months, this figure dropped down to about 93% on my previous computer. So just goes to show that uh, giving a date to your profiles when you save them, all you have to do is hit the save button and that immediately applies the profile to your screen and your computer combination that you're looking at so you don't have to put the profiles anywhere again. Same as with the spider print, it automatically puts the profiles for the print end of things into your profiles folder. But here basically we're getting the opportunity to check it against different types of displays. And you can also have a look at the different color spaces as well. So I can have a look at how these displays or this display looks compared to the Adobe RGB color space. Now you can see there it's actually only about 73 or 74% of Adobe RGB's color space. 
which again is a, an important thing because, for instance, if you're retouching in uh, that can only show sRGB, you'd be far better off retouching in sRGB because if you have your Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever other product set to retouch in Adobe RGB, but you can only see sRGB because your display can only show that. If you start, in particular, in this instance, retouching a whole bunch of light greens, maybe you do a lot of landscapes like me, it's not going to give you a very good result because you don't know what you're doing here. Now, I recommend you, you work or you shoot in Adobe RGB, and for preference, go and get yourself a decent monitor like an ISO, which will actually show you a large proportion of Adobe RGB. So let's have a look at some of the, the ISOs here. So there, there's my one of my ISOs that I have here, and you know, in some cases, that's showing you slightly bigger than Adobe RGB. So, so there, there you are. You know, that's that's recommendation. There would be to, uh, for best practices, work in Adobe RGB, but on a display that can show Adobe RGB. But hopefully, that's that's taken us swiftly tonight. We've had to cram in a lot because there's a lot in the Spider Studio uh, through the 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 workflow here, as far as uh, your capture workflow is concerned. So we started off looking at that Spider Cube, or looking at the capture front end, and how the Spider Cube in particular can help on getting colours correct at the front end. We have a look at the uh, at the end here at the Spider Elite. That solution for calibrating your screens, and it has to be said that is the most important, perhaps, uh, stage of the the whole workflow. But I don't know, they're, they're all important basically. And if you are printing, uh, whether you're printing or whether you're using a printer's spider print, giving you that opportunity to either print out those calibration charts yourself and read them, or send the chart to your printers and get it sent back to you, and basically you can calibrate them yourself to be as accurate as possible. Now, some print companies will give you a generic profile, which is a good good um, sort of part way to, to getting your calibrated workflow. The profiles, if, you, if you're getting them produced, you know, getting them sent to you or you're downloading them from a print company's website, they're going to be a, a, certainly a lot better than, than guessing, but you know, it would be recommended to actually have a, a pucker profile that you can actually read yourself, that you can therefore know on the day. If you're going to get it right, I've read it, I've calibrated it, I've created my profile, I've soft proofed, I know where I am. So. There's our Spider 5 Studio, because the constituent parts there all come as part of uh, the, the Studio kit, basically, and even comes in a nice case with a few other bits and pieces in there. Uh, nowadays, uh, you you don't have to worry about uh, having disks with it, because you just download the, the, the relevant uh, softwares from the site. So as soon as you get the, the kit, you can actually go to um, the uh, the Getting Started page on the Datacolor website, and you can see where to download your relevant softwares there. And of course, the card that comes in the, the case tells you uh, your serial numbers for the, the relevant uh, devices there as well. It has to be said, the cube. No serial number required, really. Uh, but you do have a quick start guide there, which takes you through how to use it again. So a whole bunch of support and information there. Good thing, Spider 5 Studio, uh, the lovely kind of people at Datacolor have actually dropped the price. So this is the Euro pricing here. But they've actually reduced it by um, uh, a good 55 uh, euros there to, uh, to give you a, a much more affordable chance to get your print your screen and your capture calibrated all in one go. So uh, really, uh, you know, kudos and, and thanks very much to the guys at uh, Datacolor there. Another little uh, thank you to them and to, to our friends at Adobe because Datacolor and Adobe work very hand in hand and obviously you've seen me using uh, Lightroom a fair bit tonight and I have to say cracking piece of software for working in particular in, in things like batch processing for changing colors, either for input or for output, as you've seen me doing tonight. And that's where you can now get 15% off your new new signups for Adobe Creative Plan, or up to 15%. Yeah. In fact, I think it might even be up to 20% now, so check the site. But go to that, uh, that URL there, www.datacolor.com forward slash Adobe 2015 forward slash UK. That's for if you if you bought a piece of uh, data color kit, you can go there, and as I say, you can you can get up to a 20%. I think we'll say 15%, but it might even be better discount off of the the Creative Cloud Photography Plan. Now that's the 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 bundle that comes with Lightroom and Photoshop CC, and a few other bits and pieces like Behance in there as well. So and and the mobile apps as well for uh, for for Lightroom and so on. So it's a great bundle, and you know I think a list price is probably only about uh, nine pounds a month nowadays. So it's a very affordable way of getting the latest software, but 
you, you've got it even more affordable uh, tonight if you go to that URL and you've, you've got, uh, if you well, further to tonight and you, you buy some of the, the data color equipment, you can get that discount on there, up to that discount. So let's wrap it up, folks. Let's, let's say to you if, you, if you don't get a chance to ask all your questions tonight, because we are going to go for a hard finish at, uh, uh, at 8 o'clock my time, so that's about 10 minutes time. Uh, but basically, if you don't get a chance to answer all, or ask all your questions tonight, then please go to our free phone support line. It is two zeros because it is a European-wide um, free phone number there, the 00800-700-870. And there's the number for the USA, although I don't think we have too many people from the USA on tonight. Or go to our ticketing service, and basically you can uh, also uh, get a whole bunch of questions answered via our ticketing support line there, basically a very uh, good and intelligent bunch of guys who uh, do a great job for us in, in our support team. Um, lastly, uh, don't forget uh, you can uh, submit a ticket if you need to, or uh, if you want to, uh, you can find out more, go to further of our webinars. We're going to have a couple coming up. In fact, we're going to do one in the start of November with one of the guys from Adobe, Mr. Richard Curtis. He's coming back to do another session on some Lightroom tips and tricks and Photoshop and so on. Alongside myself, we're going to be talking about various different uh, elements. So we'll have, perhaps have a look at the Spider Checker, the, the color card, which is the, the perfect add-on for the uh, the Spider 5 Studio, and we'll have a look at that in the start of November. Um, and we've also got some uh, other webinars coming up, so keep an eye on that site there to uh, to find out more. Lastly, if you do want to uh, have the, the horrors of seeing me, that's me on screen there, uh, demonstrating some of this in, in less than just screenshots, you can actually go to, the, the, um, go to YouTube, pop in Next Tech two T's, look for that and you'll see a whole bunch of tutorial videos on there, uh, all free, which uh, cover off the spider and how to use that, spider 5, how to use the uh, spider print, and uh, how to use things like the cube there, you can see that's the, the session I was saying, so if you need to actually see it being uh, used in, in the flesh as it were and get more of a feel for it than the, uh, the, the two-dimensional view tonight, then there's a great place to, to go and see some of our resources, and there's a whole bunch of other spider videos up there on, on YouTube as well, so uh, hopefully that's, that's answered some of your questions that will be coming up tonight. Um, I'm going to say thank you very much at this point and open it up to you.